My name is Adam Beck and I'm a vascular surgeon at the University of Alabama at Birmingham and I'm going to talk to you today about your aneurysms. Um, very basically, aortic aneurysms are a weakening in the wall of the blood vessel and there are two types of blood vessels in your body. You have arteries and you have veins. Arteries take blood away from your heart and veins take blood back to your heart. The most common blood vessels to have an aneurysm in are in the arteries. Uh, and the aorta is one of the most common arteries in your body to have an, an aneurysm. It's also the largest artery in your body. Um, as I said, the aneurysm is a weakening in the wall of your blood vessel, and that weakening allows the blood vessel to balloon up, and it literally follows the same laws of physics as a plain old rubber balloon. So if you blow on a balloon, as the balloon gets bigger, the wall tension goes up, the wall becomes thinner, and as you keep blowing on it, eventually it will pop. Um, so similarly, aneurysms can uh, rupture, and that's why we treat aneurysms is because of that risk of rupture. There are three things that I take into account when I'm thinking about fixing an aortic aneurysm, and um, very basically those are, number one, what's the risk of doing nothing? What if we just watch the aneurysm over time? What would be the risk of rupture over time? And we usually will put that into the context of an annual or one-year risk of rupture. Uh, the second thing is, is what are you like? What's your overall health like? What do we think your longevity of good quality life is? And number three is, what's the risk of doing something? So if we decide we're going to fix an aneurysm, what would be the risk of the procedure that I need to do in order to fix it? So the aorta, as I said, is the largest artery in your body. So if you were uh, standing here in front of me, I'm going to draw this a little bit bigger than scale, but the aorta starts at the heart. And it has branches that go to your brain and arms. And as it runs through the chest and passes through the diaphragm, you have branches that go to your intestines and kidneys. And then it comes down and splits and goes down to your legs. So what I've drawn here is, is basic, normal aortic anatomy. So these lines I just drew here would be your diaphragm. Those, that's the muscle that divides your chest from your abdomen. Your heart would be here. The aorta starts at the aortic valve at the heart, has branches that go to your brain and arms, comes down through your chest, has branches to your intestines and kidneys, splits down here. These are called the iliac arteries, common iliac, internal, external. And these lines I drew across here would be where your groin creases are. And then these are femoral arteries, and these go down to your legs. The most common place in your aorta to have an aneurysm, about 80% of them are here below your renal arteries. So we call that infrarenal. Uh, that just means below the arteries that go to your kidneys. The uh, thoracic aorta and ascending aorta are the uh, make up the preponderance of the rest of the aneurysms. And then sometimes your entire aorta can be aneurysmal. And if you have an aneurysm that includes the thoracic and abdominal aorta, that's called a thoracoabdominal aneurysm. And what we do to fix these and the implications of the aneurysm size and the type of procedure that we do all depends on where the branch vessels are as far as what our, what our options are. There are two basic types of aortic aneurysms. One is called a saccular aneurysm, and that is basically just like it sounds. It's a, it looks like a, a sac. So if you had a, imagine a straight tube and a sac off the side of it, that would be a saccular aneurysm. Um, brain aneurysms are mostly saccular aneurysms. Aortic aneurysms, though, are mostly what we call fusiform aneurysms, so they look like this. And that's just a description of the shape, and we know much more about the natural history of a fusiform aneurysm than we do a saccular aneurysm. These tend to have what we believe to be a higher rupture risk at a smaller size. Um, these aneurysms in men, we tend not to fix these, not even think about fix these until they're about five and a half centimeters. In women, we think about fixing them at about five centimeters. The, uh, just to go through that algorithm that I mentioned to you, the rupture risk of a five centimeter, or five and a half centimeter aneurysm in a man is about 5% per year, uh, somewhere between two and 5% per year. Uh, so that's an annual rupture risk. So each year that you live at the same size, your rupture risk would be about uh, 5% on the high end. 
aneurysms do tend to grow. Um, as they grow, the, as I mentioned earlier, the rupture risk goes up. And so at a six centimeter aneurysm, it's going to be probably a little higher than 5%, six and a half centimeter, probably somewhere between 10 and, and 15%, and then so on. We take that risk of rupture, as I mentioned, and we put it into the context of what you're like, because what you have to remember when we fix an aneurysm is that um, no matter what we do, at the end of that aneurysm repair, you're going to be you. You're not going to all of a sudden run faster or jump higher. You're going to be the you're going to be in the same condition that you are when we fix the aneurysm. So, if you have uh, severe diseases such as emphysema or heart disease, or if you uh, had a cancer, um, you're still going to have those things when we fix your aneurysm. And that's why we have to really consider what we think your longevity is and what your quality of life is going to be after repair. And then the third thing, as I mentioned, is the risk of doing something when we fix the aneurysm. And I'm going to kind of walk through the, the ways that we fix aneurysms. I'll leave these up here to talk about stents. Um, there's very basically two ways that we fix aneurysms. One is a minimally invasive repair or what we call endovascular repair, and we work inside the blood vessels. Um, and then the other is an open repair. And sometimes we'll do some things that are sort of... Um, a uh, combination of both of those types of procedures. So when we fix an aneurysm with a minimally invasive or pr procedure, we use stents or stent grafts actually. And I'm going to show you stents that we use for blockages in the arteries just to show you the concept. So um, this, is a, this is a stent. Um, a stent is a wire form structure. You can see that it's uh, flexible. Uh, it has its own, this type has its own outward radial force, so I can squeeze it and it returns to the same size. This is another stent. You can see that they come in different shapes and sizes, so I can squeeze this and it returns to its shape. Uh, some stents are uh, what we call balloon expandable, and if I crush them, they will stay crushed, but these are self-expanding stents. This is a stent graft. So this is this got similar to a stent in that it has a wire form structure. It has graft material covering it. This is a different brand of stent. They both have a similar concept. These come uh, scrunched up inside of a catheter. And when we fix an aneurysm like this one, if, if we want to repair this aneurysm with a stent, we're not covering the aneurysm and we're not cutting the aneurysm out. We're relining the inside of the aneurysm with one of these stents. And so the way this works is we um, we deliver a wire through the aorta. We deliver the device, uh, which is a, we deliver the delivery system, which contains the device into the aorta, and then we uncover it. And so it would look something like this inside the aorta. And as long as we have seal and fixation, so seal above and below the aneurysm and fixation so the device can't move, this aneurysm will clot or will clot around the stent like that, and as long as it's clotted and there's no flow into the aneurysm, the aneurysm can't rupture because the stent graft is absorbing all of that pressure. So when your aneurysm involves the portion of your aorta below the kidney arteries, they're relatively straightforward to fix as long as we have a segment of the artery that is of a diameter that allows us to land a stent into it. So I'm just going to draw what we call an infrarenal aortic aneurysm, like I mentioned earlier. So this one I'm going to draw has a really long, what we call neck below the renal arteries. Uh, so this would be a segment of, of aorta that would allow us to land a stent into it. And the stents that we use for an infrarenal aortic aneurysm look like these. So you can see that these are modular. They've got one short leg and one long leg. So we put the device in from one side through small incisions in the groins. And we access the artery down here in the femoral arteries. And we deliver the device in and deploy it. And it will... Uh, land inside the aorta and we extend out into the iliac arteries as needed so it would look like this inside the artery and 
and as I mentioned before, same concept, as long as we have seal and fixation above and below the aneurysm, the aneurysm will clot around the stent and it can't rupture. As the aneurysm involves the portion of the aorta that has branches that go to your brain and arms or to your intestines and kidneys, it becomes a much more difficult clinical situation because of our need to obtain that seal and fixation. So I'm going to draw uh, a thoracal abdominal aneurysm now. Those are the branches to the brain and arms, aortic valve. Draw this aneurysm, kidney arteries coming off of the aneurysm. Those are where the groin creases are, the femoral arteries, and here are the kidneys and the arteries to the intestines. So if I wanted to fix this aneurysm, we can't just cover up the arteries that go to the intestines and kidneys with one of these straight stunts like this because you wouldn't have any blood flow to your intestines and kidneys. So sometimes we will use stunts that have holes in them or branches on them. So this device that I'm showing you here has branches that on it here. And if I show it from the inside, I'm not sure if we can get a good picture of that. If I show it from the inside, you can see the branches there. And what we do is we extend these out with small stents out into the branch vessels. And then this device actually has branches and a fenestration. The fenestration is a hole in the device here. So what this would look like is a stent extending all the way out, all the way through the part of the aorta that has branches to the intestines and kidneys, as I mentioned, like this, and then you would have small stents that extend out into each of the branch vessels like this, above, and this allows us to get a seal above and below the aneurysm. And this is called, again, a branched and fenestrated aortic graft. And I'll show you a, a fenestrated graft here. And this fenestrated graft has got four holes in it, just like the one that I drew for you here that has branches to the intestines and kidneys. Um, and as I mentioned, you can actually have an aneurysm that is isolated to the, to the aorta below the kidney arteries um, called a juxtarenal aneurysm. And in, the, and in that case, we may use a stent like this one um, that has two fenestrations in it. So they can become increasingly complex as we cover more of the aorta. Aneurysms that involve the arch of the aorta or the portion of the aorta that has branches to the brain and arms sometimes need to be managed with open surgery and that would be done by a cardiac surgeon if necessary, because the heart has to be stopped in order to do that repair. But we now have technologies that actually can allow us to treat aneurysms in the aortic arch that have involvement of the branches to the brain and arms. So I'll draw this aneurysm as basically hanging off the bottom of the arch like that. And so if we wanted to treat this aneurysm with a minimally invasive approach, again, we can't just put a stent graft across the, we can't put a stent graft across the entirety of the arch like this or you wouldn't have any blood flow to your brain and arms. So sometimes we can use a stent like this one that has branches on it or holes in it, a branch and fenestrated device. The most common is a branch device and this can land in the aorta closer to the heart. And in this case would have a branch that extends into one of the vessels that provides blood flow to the brain like this. And this is where I mentioned sometimes we have to do an open and endovascular procedure. So in this particular case, like I've drawn here, we would do a procedure where we bypass these vessels 
to the brain and arms here, and that allows blood flow to enter this branch and then continue to perfuse those or provide blood flow to those branches despite being covered like this. And when we do an open procedure for aortic aneurysms, um, it's an entirely different operation. So for this procedure, for that aneurysm, like I said, that would require a, a cardiac surgeon and, um, and circulatory arrest while the aneurysm is repaired. For an aneurysm that involves the portion of the aorta immediately below the kidneys, I'll show you an open graph just to show you what that looks like. So if we had an aneurysm like this and we felt like the, it needed to be repaired with an open procedure, we would have to put a clamp on the aorta to stop the blood flow through the disease portion of the aorta and we would replace the, the blood vessel with a new tube and that is Dacron. So this is a woven polyester material uh, that we sew into the aorta and when that procedure is done, the procedure is, the aneurysm is gone. Um, so our decision process for these types of repairs is again, uh, what's the risk of leaving the aneurysm alone? What is the patient like? And what's the risk of doing something? And the risk of doing something depends entirely on what we do, uh, minimally invasive or open. Here at UAB, we can do uh, essentially anything that you can do to an aorta, both open and minimally invasive. We do try to um, do minimally invasive repairs when we can. Um, oftentimes, the, these procedures, especially thoracoabdominal or arch aneurysms, require a multidisciplinary approach, uh, including a vascular surgeon, cardiac surgeon, cardiac anesthesia, and uh, we have a, a wonderful group of, uh, of uh, cardiovascular surgeons here at UAB and, and, and uh, can treat all of these pathologies that I mentioned to you. Thank you.